Hello everyone, welcome to lesson 27 of C programming on the Mac. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering the switch statement, which was something I could have covered way back, uh, probably in tutorial 10 or so, but basically I'm going to be going over some um, older things for the next uh, tutorial, and the last tutorial that I just did was on globals, which was also something I could have taught you um, a while back, but chose not to. So anyway, um, this tutorial and the next tutorial are going to be on concepts that um, I could have taught, but I just chose not to. And the switch statement is very similar to the if statement, and you'll see why. And that's kind of why um, the switch statement just isn't used really that often. And it's good in some cases, but uh, in general, it's if statement is more powerful and it can do more things. So in general, people use the if statement. But anyway, uh, this is how the switch statement works. So um, we can use either an integer or a character in the switch statement, and that's another downfall of it. It doesn't really can't really use all types, so character or an integer. And um, how we go about this is we just say um, we're going to make our own character, and we're just going to call it key, and key is going to get a value of Q. So let's say we have a program that uh, when entered a Q or an N or something else on the keyboard, it does something. So um, this is how the switch statement oops, switch statement is going to work. So our expression is, what, what that means is it's just the value that you're testing for. So we're testing for key in this case. So in this case here, we're going to see if, um, if key is equal to Q, then we're going to execute this code. And we're going to use our printf, and we're just going to say key is q. And that's how that works. So um, it's pretty simple. We just, again, we just put our variable that we're testing for in the expression right here. And then our case, we have to test for a certain value. And then this is our code that we execute when we're um, running each case. So this default case at the bottom is what will happen if key is equal to none of our cases above. It's the fallback case of if everything else does not happen. So um, let's just make another case here as well. Um, we're going to call this one n, and we'll just say q. I'm going to make a printf. Key is n. And then we're going to make our default case. And again, I said this is just what happens when either of these cases is not either of these cases aren't executed. So if key is equal to something like P, then it's not going to hit either of these cases, so it's going to run the default case. So let's go to our printf, run key is, um, let's say, an invalid, invalid command. And yeah, so we'll leave it at that. Do a few backslash ends in here. And there we go. So let's go ahead and run this, and as you can see, key is equal to Q, so we should be running this statement right here. So go to our console, build and run, and as you can see, we get key is Q. And let's try this for when key is N, build and run, key is N, as you can see, it doesn't run the Q case above it, it just runs this case, and then it's done. So let's try another value, such as P, and we'll try to run this. And we get key is an invalid command because it doesn't hit either of these cases and it goes to the default case, which is everything else that key is not. So um, let's try something else here. What if we get rid of our break statement in here? What does the break actually do? Well, the break, um, basically what happens is when you run one case and as soon as it hits the break, it knows to get out of the switch statement which is why we generally use it after each case. But what if we wanted to fall through to another case? Let's say we want to run the Q, and then we also want to run the N for some weird reason. So we'll just take out the break, and if key is equal to Q, and we build and run this, as you can see, we get key is Q, key is N. Because what happens is, it doesn't hit the break after running this case, so it falls through to the next case until it hits this break statement here. So that's a very basic introduction to the switch statement, and it doesn't get much more complicated than that either. So um, yeah, so 
if you like these tutorials, please subscribe to the channel and get some others to subscribe as well if you think these tutorials will benefit them. And, um, yeah, leave some suggestions on the channel, and also, uh, more tutorials are on the way. So, see you in the next tutorial.